Any kind of uncertainty tends to have bankers fold the books up and say, let's just sit and wait. It's not a problem of cash being out there. It's, being, it's having cash that they want to deploy into an investment that is a low enough risk that they're comfortable with putting the money in. Uh, that the financial community are looking at is, you know, from a, from a long-term standpoint, I mean, expecting that plant to be there 10 or 20 years that you're trying to finance. And so what's going to happen, not just what is government policy with tax credits over the next, that may expire in three years or five years, it's what certainty that, that whatever program is going to be there in 10 or 15 or 20 years. And they, they won't give you any credit for short-term fixes. That's outside of their investment horizon. I mean, they're going to stress test by saying, assuming those programs go away. And so there's where it's important to be able to establish long-term contracts for selling your fuel, uh, long-term contracts for buying feedstocks. And as, just as an example, one of the challenges in dealing with the Department of Defense or the RGSA in general is, you know, with a limitation of five years on contracts, that's not going to get you a lot of credit from a financing standpoint. Long-term certainty is a requirement if you're going to be if you're going to be able to use that from a, from a financial investment standpoint. And I think that's what, one area where the Advanced Biofuels Association can, brings a large benefit. You're you're 40 plus companies that can talk with a common voice and with clarity to Congress and the White House about what's needed. To, to meet the objectives that, that the, the political environment would like to see, which is a lot, which is renewable advanced biofuels in the marketplace. The next thing that, we, that, that will impact the, the perception of the industry is when the current set of plants that are, are, are being planned and being engineered and being built, like ours and others, when they begin coming online and reality is gallons in the marketplace. And we do have gallons in the marketplace today. Dynamic fuels you know, is one good example, but there, there are others. But I think the, that's, you know, that's been online you know, a year or two. And so now what they want to see is an expansion of that. And more importantly, what enables an expansion of that? And, and we have to get policy in line with what reality in the financial community is. Five years from now, there'll be a lot more production. There'll be a lot more production of numerous different technologies, numerous different fuels, whether they're going into the gasoline pool or the jet fuel pool or the diesel pool. And so one of the things that really helps financial markets is for there being a market of the product out there, enough volume so that there is confidence that, that if we make it, it will be sold, which is going to mean more jobs to more people, new supply chains being created, new types of commerce, new types of service companies uh, uh, coming into the marketplace, diversification of our economy, all but very positive things.